Thanks, everyone. Um, as I was listening to all the speakers back there, I realized that I'm the first British speaker here this morning in Berlin, in the heart of, the, in the heart of Europe, on the day when Britain's just notified they were triggering the exit of the European Union. So I'm <laughs> not sure about that, but I'm proud, I'm proud to say ich bin ein Berliner, ich bin Europäer. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, this is actually not my first time on this stage. Uh, my, my last time I was here was exactly 323 days ago, hence the title of the talk. Um, so I just wanted to uh, update you on um, what's been happening in the meantime. So the, the last time I was here, I actually announced the founding of our company, Tigera. Um, and uh, you know, one of the first things that we actually did as a company was to go join Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, it was important for us because we really believe passionately in the vision of Cloud Native for application deployment and development. And uh, this model of being container packaged, you know, dynamically managed, um, microservices oriented, because it really does promise to deliver the agility, the scalability, the reliability that you know, we need from the cloud. And this is more than a promise. Right? We're actually seeing this in reality now. So you'll remember at the end of February, we had the Amazon outage and you know, pretty well covered that the folks who were using Kubernetes across multiple availability zones just sat back and watched and everything continued. Um, and and this, is, this is pretty amazing when you, when you really step back and think about how things have changed over the last few years and what Kubernetes enables. But it's not without its challenges. Um, you know, one of those which we're very focused on is what happens to the network when you start to move to this much more dynamic environment. And when I say dynamic, you know, this isn't a small incremental change. This is orders of magnitude. When you think about the number of workloads that you're putting on a host, maybe an order of magnitude more than when you had VMs, um, and, the, and the lifespan, these containers come and go uh, much faster than typically than, than your virtual machine sits. So you're talking about at least a couple of orders of magnitude greater churn. And each one of these pods, when you create it, wants an IP address, wants to be able to talk on a network. This is simply a, a le level of dynamicity which your traditional software-defined networking just wasn't designed for. Uh, so we see uh, you know, the traditional SDN architectures and the traditional security appliances really just struggling to keep up with, with this kind of networking. So um, th this is really why we founded Tigera, to address this, this challenge. Uh, you know, we, um, we really feel that the, the networking layer needs to be simplified to make it scalable and to make it easy to diagnose and troubleshoot and just kind of get out of the way of the application. Uh, we also believe that security has to be dynamic and fine-grained and really kind of working hand-in-glove with that, the kind of RBAC features that we've, we've seen to really just lock down access at a network level. And crucially, all these kind of capabilities have to be delivered in a cloud-native architecture that's going to scale in the same way that the underlying platform does. So we work on several projects in this area. Um, we have maintainers on the cloud network uh, interface, uh, the container network interface CNI uh, project, and um, probably the two main projects we work on, uh, um, Flannel, which we work on together with CoreOS, and, and Calico, which uh, our team originally developed. So actually, let's, just a show of hands, who in the audience is using one of these two projects for their networking for their Kubernetes cluster? OK, so that's, that's a pretty large proportion of, of, uh, of Kubernetes uh, users today. So this is pretty important to uh, a lot of you. Um, and you know, I think you know, this is what we see throughout. Uh, you know, as my, my friend Craig McClucky says, it, you know, it's going to take a village to really make this movement get where we think, it's gonna, uh, we think it needs to be. And you know, this village has a lot of different types of people living in it. Um, so you have you know, just partners, people that we work with to make sure that our offerings are complementary. We have contributors, developers who are actually submitting pull requests, enhancing the projects. And then we have the user community, which is really helping to drive forward the projects by giving us the feedback from the users and um, you know, really um, pushing the envelope for us and helping us see where we need to take it. And you know, a whole load of companies that we work with uh, throughout, the, throughout the ecosystem. So I like to say that you know, this is not something uh, we're doing on our own. There's a, um, a huge amount of effort out there in terms of community. 
And just kind of the 393-day the day thing, uh, 323 day thing uh, just to kind of compare back then when we started, in terms of contributors into Project Calico, for example, uh, that we had about 25 who were outside of our core team. Um, now that's nearly 100, so nearly, nearly quadrupled over less than a year. And in terms of the user community that we see online, um, that's similar kind of scale of, of change. So pretty dramatic um, impact over the last year of, um, you know, of, of this movement. But you know, this is not something that I think you know, we, we can take sole claim for, because really, in many ways, it's, it's been pretty easy, because we've just attached ourselves to you know, this rocket ship that is Kubernetes that you know, we, we've got so much excitement around. And, and, um, in fact, I can see this because you know, Calico, for example, does, uh, doesn't just integrate with Kubernetes. We have a whole load of different orchestrators, um, you know, an OpenStack and VM-based environments that we work with. But uh, in a recent survey, we found you know, over three quarters of, of our user base was really focused on Kubernetes. So this, this is very much the, the future of the project and where we're putting a lot of our, um, our efforts. But you know, this, is, this is really a journey. This is what I'd like to emphasize here is, you know, firstly, the spirit of community, the fact that you know, we're on a multi-year journey to get where we're going to need to go. I mean, we have this shared vision, I think, of what that future looks like, how developers will be able to easily create high-performance, scalable applications without worrying about the network, and operations teams, crucially, get the visibility and control that they need and, and can apply security rules. And um, you know, that, that's, that's really the vision. And I think you know, one of the things I'm proudest of and one of the things I'm most excited about in, in this journey is the community that we're working with and the relationships that we're building and um, you know, the fact that this is, this is not just an effort from us, this is a lot of people all coming together. So thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you uh, out there on this journey. <laughs>